Oh, and I want to thank Barbara for this second opportunity to greet his lovers. And also, as Barbara has said, to uh, tie up some loose ends that I left lying around last night. As I, um, I, I just want to bring together some of the things that I said. Uh, now, I explained how Beryl, my sister, was instrumental. Was the instrument Bobby used to bring me to him? Well, she could only bring me so far, and then Baba took over. In fact, she it, it told me later that the very picture that she gave me, that Baba awakened me through, Baba told her to give that picture to me. See? Of all the pictures she had, she had no choice. This is the one that he selected. And it's the picture with the Muhammad. Uh, Baba had, there were a series of three pictures, and one, Baba's eyes are closed, and he had his arm around Muhammad. But on some of the pictures, they removed Muhammad, and it's just Baba's face with the closed eyes and the flowing hair. Some of you remember that, right? Well, that was the picture that he uh, had to give to me. And, uh, and I want to make a couple of uh, corrections. Now, last night I said that the telegram that my that Baba sent my husband, Harry, uh, he said, um, Elizabeth, meaning my, his sister, is blessed in my love for you and yours. I, forgot, I left out the yours. We have to th be accurate with Baba. You know, when we say Baba said, you, he wants us to be accurate. So um, it's you and yours. And also, let me see, there was one other thing. Well, that'll come to me. I want to um, speak about uh, 1956 when I, I met Baba uh, for the first time. It's funny. From the time he awakened me around 1953 until we knew for certain that Baba was coming in 1956, it was just a series of, uh, of, of oh, wonderful experiences and and storytelling and, and, you know, drawing me to him and all. But when we f uh, knew for certain in, in 56 the Baba was coming, I got so frightened. I got so panicky. I was afraid to meet Baba. I used to think that, oh, I must, I'll certainly disappear. I'll disintegrate. So I must go, I'll have to go up and smoke because I knew Baba's... <laughs> I knew Baba's power. I had felt it. I, I knew. I had experienced him. So I, to, see, to, to come face to face with him, I, I just knew I, I wouldn't have been able to take it. So although we, I prepared to meet him, I was terrified. I was really frightened of him. So the day, the day finally arrived, and Baba came, and I was hiding in the crowd afraid to, to really see Bob, meet, meet him. And as he came out of the, uh, the uh, airport terminal, he peeped around the crowd and singled me out and waved to me. And I said, oh, he knows me. <laughs> Bob knows me. Look, look. And all, the, all, the, all the fears and all the worries and just disappeared, just disappeared. Now, with all the, um, with all the preparing. I went to the meetings. I was in on everything concerning the trip, Baba's itinerary. He was going to be in New York for a certain time. We were going to have luncheons, everything I knew all about. Then he was going on to Myrtle Beach. From Myrtle Beach, he was coming to California. And I think then he was going to um, Washington. Am I correct? Anyway, I knew he, Baba was going to travel around. Well, I had the small children, and I knew I couldn't travel with Baba, you know? But in all the, would you believe this? In all the correspondence, in all the meetings, in all the discussions, I never heard that we could go only to Myrtle Beach with Baba and then return home. I always understood that you had to go the, the whole distance, you know? I never heard it. Well, the last day 
when Baba was about to, um, well, well, Baba had uh, dis dismissed us, and we were in the, in the room that um, he had, had uh, used for the interviews, and we were milling around, you know, and, and uh, I think I took a flower out of the a vase, the bunch of flowers that was on the mantel there, and uh, Billy Eaton was in there with me. <clears throat> so um, she asked me if I was going to, um, to uh, Myrtle Beach with Baba. I said, uh, no, I can't, I, you know, I have the children, I can't make that, uh, the trip all, to all these different places. So she said, well, uh, you could have gone to Myrtle Beach and then come back. I looked at her. I said, what did you say? She said, well, many are only going to Myrtle Beach to be with Baba. They have jobs and all that, and they're coming home. I said, who said that? When did that happen? Who? She said, well, it's always been known. I never heard it. I got so, I got so upset to think that I could have gone to Myrtle Beach with Baba. And here, I, you know, I never heard it. How could I not have heard that? I not have read it. How could I not have? So then I, I got so furious. I started looking at them. I said, look, they can go flying around with Baba. They're all single. They have no children. He buried me down. These are the children that I was so happy with and my life was so, this husband and this, these children, right? And I got so angry. He burdened me down with these children and this husband. <laughs> Beryl has no children. Billy, look at her. Did you do the fed out of the Oh, I was, I was furious. Oh, but I was so mad. We left, and we had to cross a bridge to get home. And so help me, Baba knows I could have thrown all of them in the water. I could have thrown them in the water to be free now to go, you know, to, to go, because I felt that it was the chill day now had kept me from being uh, able to go with Baba, you see. And I, oh, you can't imagine how, how, you can't imagine the state I was in to, oh, compassionate Baba. That night, Baba had me to take his picture and he had me hold, lie, lie down and hold a pitch in front of me. And as the, my finger, this finger, was resting on, the, on his photo, suddenly it became like a beam of light. And it slowly moved across Bob, the picture, you know? It was no longer a finger, it was like a, 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 an extension, beautiful white light, and it moved across Bob's picture until it rested in the heart area. And I began to hear Baba's heart beating, beating through the picture. And from that beat, a beam of light came across to me. This came, and I could hear my heart beating. And then both hearts connected. I no longer heard my heart, but my heart was in his heart. And he was showing me that I was safe in his heart. I wasn't missing anything. He had carried me with him in his heart. You understand? Yeah? And all this frustration and all this anger and all this disappointment, you know, that I wasn't with Baba, just left me. And I just enjoyed such a blissful, peaceful state, you know? And that's, that's the way he had me to, to just get rid of this feeling of uh, loss. But you see, I was not ready to be with Bob at that time. You know, if it's not your time, it just isn't your time. You know, and you can be around in uh, Milton and, 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 and connected with or any and phase of Bob's work, but if it isn't for you to be there, you're just not there. And you don't hear, you don't, you're not, <laughs> you don't know about it. I've seen, uh, you know, as someone else has said, so many times with Baba, and Baba will make one gesture. How many people f feel and respond and get a different reaction to that one gesture, you know, that Baba made, would, would have made? And it's personal, it's for them. And my turn was to come in 
1958. See, that was my time. I still had the children, I still had the husband, but, <laughs> but Bible made the way for me to come in 1958. And I'd like to share that with you. I had a thing, all the things I had things about, I had a thing about being in somebody else's kitchen working. And if you wanted to infuriate me, suggest that I work with somebody, domestic as a domestic. You just dear. <laughs> suggest that I go into somebody's kitchen. All right, my, my little daughter, the oldest daughter, she uh, started first grade now in 1957. And uh, she wasn't in school any time. About two weeks into September, she came on, she said, Mommy, Miss Gherkin uh, says, do you know anybody uh, who would like to um, help her in her house? To, uh, she needs somebody to uh, clean her house for her while she's at school. So uh, I didn't exactly get mad, but I thought about my friend who does that kind of work. And I ran downstairs to her and I asked her if she, you know, she might want a four hours she wanted twice a week. So uh, I thought about her and I said, well, maybe she might want to do it. I went down to Mary. She lived on the first floor, I on the second, on the third. And uh, I asked her if she would want to work for this teacher. Oh, no, she says she's, uh, she has the children and the blah, blah, and the who the her. No, she couldn't take it. So I started back up the stairs, and we came in the, you know, in the stairwell. And uh, before I could get to my floor, um, Baba says, uh, why don't you take it? <laughs> so I, uh, and you know, Baba can speak so sweetly, and, and make your head just to turn on the side. And you're, and you're just listening, you know. I said, oh, yeah. That, yeah. Then I can buy the, uh, call, uh, Colleen some shoes and don't sell this and two, two, uh, two, two days a week, you know, four hours. That's eight. And it's a dollar an hour, four dollars. All this I'm spending is I'm going up the stairs. I had two weeks spent before. I, so I've told my, <laughs> I told my daughter, uh, Janice, I said, all right, tell Mrs. Gherkin that I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for her. And um, so she sent back, and I went and saw her. And she had the keys and everything all ready. And uh, I would go over to her house, the little cottage she had. And, um, you know, she, it was clean. So much so that she confided to me one day. She said, you know, Bernice, I've been teaching for 35 years. She said, I've never needed a housekeeper. I don't know why, why I have you now. She said, <laughs> she, said, I don't, she didn't understand it. She was confused. So anyway, I started working about the second week in September. And about the end of September, no, second week in September. Well, whenever I started, soon after that, Baba said to me to save my money for my trip to Myrtle Beach. So I was walking around with this knowledge that Baba was coming to Myrtle Beach. He told me to take care of the commitments because I had already promised in my head to buy these shoes and what have you. Take care of those commitments and from the, from the day, from the week that I had paid, bought these things, the following week I was to begin saving this $8 for my trip to Myrtle Beach. Do you know that from the time, the week that I started saving that money, to the day we went to Myrtle Beach, I had the exact fare for my trip to Myrtle Beach. The exact fare. My husband gave me spending money, and, but it came out to the penny. And that is how I got to Myrtle Beach. Okay? 
the very thing, the very work that I hated the most was the work that I, Bob had me to do. And I enjoyed doing it. She made it so pleasant. She used to apologize, you know, apologize for having me working there. And one, <laughs> yeah. and one day, one day the, um, the, the uh, fire peop, uh, man, the inspector, the fire inspector came by because every so often they come around to the homeowners and they expect to see that there are no fire hazards. So I answered the door and I told him that uh, Miss Gherkin was at home. So he said, well, um, you can sign. So he said, uh, uh, who shall I put down? I said, I don't know. I said, uh, the maid. So he says, oh, you don't look like the maid. I'll put down housekeeper. That's what you are. <laughs> so I was a housekeeper. And as I said, she made things so pleasant. She had a little, uh, this, uh, she had a little um, squirrel who used to come in the backyard, and she, she didn't tell me this at first, and uh, she used to put peanuts out on the windowsill for him. And uh, the first week or two that I was there, she didn't tell me that she puts these uh, things, and she'd forgotten to. I was in the bedroom, and I heard tick, 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 tick. I listened, what is that sound? I thought it was rats in the, then tick, tick. So I went out in the kitchen, and here's the squirrel sitting up there at the window, knocking for his peanuts, tick, tick, <laughs> and waiting, tick, tick. Oh, it was so cute. I, I said, he must want something, so I looked in the closet, and there was the open bag of peanuts. So I opened the window a little and gave them to him. But I mean, I just threw that in. But um, just to show you how Baba uses our, um, our, takes our weaknesses and our foolishness and uh, uses them for his advantage, you know, and to help us to, to grow. Because isn't it work is work, you know? It's honest work, it's work. Well, let's, we'll go back to, uh, you know, I had the privilege of going to um, India. Baba drew us. Uh, Baba had the East West Gathering. And at first, when he said he was going to hold the East West Gathering, I didn't, he said, you know, he always gives us, uh, gives us, if you, if you can, if you don't put yourself in debt, you know, if you can come to come. Well, there was a question of money. It was what, $900 and so on. And it was this question of money now again. How was I going to raise this fare to go to India? So I said to myself, oh, I, Bob has had me to India, uh, you know, on his own. I've seen Bob there and this and that. And if I don't get to go, I've been already. And that was my attitude. And meanwhile, time is going on. They're asking for the names and everything. And, uh, uh, Dilly and Dalian and I didn't, uh, you know, make any particular effort because it wasn't coming to me. I said, well, maybe it isn't Bob as well that I go. So one day I was talking to Miriam, Miriam Gregoire. She was a Bob lover on the phone. And all of a sudden I wasn't hearing v v Miriam. And she was, the, this was how, if she didn't get to go, to India, to be with Baba, she would, life would not be worth living. And the things that she was saying, and how it was a struggle for her, you know, but she was going, she was making every effort. And all of a sudden I started here, you know, taking stock of me. I said, well, wait a minute, you know, um, Baba has invited us to be with him. And I'm having this dilly-dally, and I, I got such a, of uh, desperation now to get things going. To, I, I wrote to Elizabeth, would she sponsor me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking, I, I got to the place where I was ready to go down on 42nd Street <laughs> and uh, hang around. <laughs> <laughs> I, you can't imagine how desperate, I, as one week went by and another week went by and nothing was happening. Oh, yeah. So I was gonna hang around and see what was going on. Ooh, yes, I had to get to India to get to Baba. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. So after I had used up all my frustration and I was crying and then I, ooh, ooh, Baba calmly said, "Why don't you ask Harry to borrow the money?" 
had never occurred to me. My husband went to the bank Monday. Wednesday, he had the check. <laughs> Wednesday, he had the check. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So when we, when we were there with, before Baba, Baba asked, uh, you know, we used to have meetings with him in the morning in the, uh, uh, in, at Guru Prasad, and uh, he would have the Westerners in. And Baba asked how many had to borrow money to, uh, to come to India, and I put my hand up, Baba looked good with me, you know, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> I put my hand, Baba looked good. <laughs> we had a good laugh about it, yeah. So he said, now be sure that you pay back these loans as soon as you get back to, you know, home. So he, I had to take a job. I had to pay that money back. Yeah. I took a job for a year. And it was at the time when where we lived, we were not, uh, the, the wife, the second, there was no second salary allowed, you know? You know, you'd be surprised, yeah? The projects, yeah, you couldn't, the husband and wife couldn't work. One or the other. And Baba knocked down all those barriers. Yes, indeed. And I worked for a year and paid back the loan. When I was with Baba in, in uh, 1958, there was a very close uh, uh, Baba, oh, in a very close inner contact that I had with Baba. But in, here in, uh, in 62, it wasn't like that at all. It was, you know, sort of distance, distant, but that's. that's Bob's way of, where he draws you in to and pushes you away to. But see, Baba was preparing me for, for the time when he would drop his body. I didn't know it then. I knew, and Baba told me I'd love him. I knew Baba to be God. I ne and I, that, nev that question never arose in my mind, is Baba God? Never. It's something that I knew inwardly. The thing that I could not cope with, or couldn't understand, or even couldn't believe, the manness of Baba, Baba being a man, being, being human, you know? Being able to hurt, being able to to uh, feel cold, you know, I would hear that, but I say, oh, Bob is God, you know, they, you know, well, cold, these things didn't affect him, you know? So if Bob hadn't prepared me for his eventually leaving the body, I would, I would have been totally crushed, totally crushed, see? So this, this is why I had to be with him in 62. I believe, among other things, other reasons, but this is what he showed me. I'll just tell you uh, the last, the last day, the last day we were with him at, at Guru Prasad, one by one we were, uh, we came up to say our, our um, bid our farewells to him in any way that we wanted to. And um, it was my turn now, and I went up to Bama. And I knelt down, and I put my hands on his feet, and I jumped, I almost toppled over on Baba's feet. Baba's feet were ice cold and hard, and like a corpse, like hard. I said to him, I said, oh, Baba, your feet are so cold. And I, I wanted to put my dress, you know, over them, and I'm, bent down and I kissed his feet and they were cold. So I stood up and I looked at Baba and Baba was not there. His eyes were closed and he was out of the body. He was not there. And I made my salutations to him and I felt a surge in my heart and Baba's arms went up like just like a robot's and returned the 
and I backed away. And I was so confused. I didn't, Papa was, all right. That was all right. When Bobby dropped the body, he brought that whole scene back to me. He said, you had my Darshan, my Darshan at that time. That is why he gave it to me in that fashion. See? I had seen Bobby, had, had, I had get, gotten Bobby's Darshan as the others had gotten in death. You see? I, I felt no need to come to, to go to India to have Baba's darshan before he was entombed. Baba gave me his darshan in 1962. If you've ever felt, I mean, ice cold, no two ways about it. No two ways about it. And he, and he, the way he was sitting just, like a corpse, and the arms came up just like a robot, you know, and down. Then, when we first uh, got to India and we met with the girls, Mehra said to me, um, you know, I have a few little things I want to give to you for the children. They said, be, you know, on the last day, stop in or whatever, and uh, be sure to come and get them for the children. She had this something for the children. Well, the days went by and I never got them. We never were alone with the girls anymore. So here it was the last day. And uh, I hadn't, re you know, received them. And, and after Baba had left, after everybody had, had uh, paid their respects, Baba left the room. And here I was sitting on the floor. I didn't know what to do. What, how am I going to get to see the girls now? And Mary you know, specifically told me to come and get these things. So I saw go her, and I went over to her, and I explained it to her. So she said, go, go in the room. Go, go. Go in there. And, and uh, to see Mary. She's right there. Through the, through, they had curtains, you know. And she went right through the curtain there. So I went in the room. And when Monty saw it, he was, oh, you shouldn't be in here. You just saw Baba. You saw Baba for the last time. You shouldn't be. And Mary said, well, just, that's all right, that's all right. And she threw me a kiss. So I reminded her. So she said, oh, yes, yes, yes. She said, but I gave them to Beryl to give to you. But Beryl never gave them to me, you know. So now they all embraced me again. <laughs> <laughs> gave me all these embraces and Mary kissed me and told me, never mind, never mind. It's all right. So I came back and, and now, well, he, another pull on the collar, come on out, you know, from Barbara, come on out. Uh, I backed out and I came back and I sat down. I was so happy, you know. So now, then after a while, it was time for us to leave Guru Prasad altogether. So um, as I was passing, the, the, uh, there was a doorway. I don't know if it, you all remember Guru Prasad, but there was a little, uh, on the, on the, yeah, on the left-hand side, on the left-hand side, there was a door. It had a curtain and some, you know, that led to the men's quarters in the back. And we had to pass that to go out into, onto the veranda. And as I was passing by the curtain, all of a sudden, there was no breeze blowing, but the curtain rippled, just like that. Just like that, just from the bottom, up, like that. And there was Baba sitting there, his legs, just his knees, legs down, showing. And I paid my last respect to Baba there. Nothing caused it to, it just rippled up like that, on an angle. It's just enough for me to see Baba's legs. And so I paid my last respects to him again. And he, I, saw, I paid my last respects to him, you know, for the last time. You see? After he dropped his body, he brought that scene back to me, too. That had significance. And he said to me, just as I sat behind the curtain in Guru Prasad, and everyone thought I had left, so it is at this time. 
Conditions will cause the curtain to rise and everyone will see me. Yeah. Oh, Baba told me so many things. So, oh, I must tell you this one. As I told you, uh, he used to t tell me stories, you know? And, uh, oh, I didn't, fi I didn't tie up the end of the, of the story about the apples. You see, the, the, the um, lover, when he went to the marketplace to buy this apple for the master, this apple he felt represented him. So he got the most beautiful, most delicious, and most uh, presentable apple that he could find because this is what he thought of himself to present to the master, you see? And the master, knowing the condition of the apple, couldn't eat it as in that condition. And so he had him coming back and each time the bond between them, the love got stronger and stronger. And at the right moment, he cut the apple open, see? And then took out all the imperfections See? and made the apple now fit for the master's use. See? See? That was the story. And he also told me this one about surrender. Uh, a, uh, a farmer had a, a pumpkin orchard, or a, a, he, saw, he raised pumpkins out in front of his house in his, in his garden there. And um, one day, this particular pumpkin heard that the, that the farmer would be coming out of his house. And he said, oh, I've, been, I've struggled so long on this vine. I, and the more I struggle, the more dirt I accumulate, the more bangs and bruises. Surely the farmer will have pity on me this time when he comes out and he'll cut me down and take me into his house. And the farmer came out and he looked over his pumpkin field. And sure enough, he selected that pumpkin with this knife, he cut him down. Oh, and the pumpkin was so happy, he was so happy. The farmer had noticed him. The farmer took him and he set him on the steps of his, of his house. And he came and he went, and he came and he went, and he sat on the, on the steps of the pumpkin, crying, well, why don't you take me inside, you know? The farmer said, well, you're dirty. You look at, you can't go in my house in that condition. So he cleaned him up, and then he still left him sitting there, you know? And he didn't take him inside, and the, the Pumpkin was desperate now. He wanted to go into the, into the farmer's house. And he cried and he cried and he cried and the farmer took pity on him. And he cut off his head, the top of him. Okay? And then the pumpkin realized all the strings and pits that was inside of him. Okay? And the farmer said, before I can take you inside and use you, I have to clean you out, okay? So the fact that he cut off his head was the surrender of the pumpkin to the farmer, see? And making himself available for the, for the farmer to clean him up and be, make him useful to him, right? See? And then he could be a jack-o'-lantern, he could be anything then, see? in service. And, attract other people to the farmer's house or whatever. But you see, you tell me in these simple forms, eh, like a child, instead of reading it in the books. Then in 1958, he was sitting in the barn with Baba, and um, after Artie, after Baba would um, um, start uh, talking and, you know, and whatever, Artie would always get behind Baba's chair you know, by the window. And one day, Baba said to me, look. And I looked over, and he was pointing to Artie. Artie was completely hollow, 
completely empty inside. And inside him, this flame gently glowed, gently glowed, completely hollow. His surrender was perked about. Yep. <laughs> Anybody want to ask anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it in New York in 56 and then in Myrtle Beach in 58? Yeah. Would you like to tell more about actually being with Bob at this time? Yeah, well, well, Bob was in the chair, you know, and when, um, 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 oh dear, your name? <laughs> uh, Leatris. Leatris uh, touched on it. And oh, yes, I w I'd like to say at the time when Bob was suffering so, and they put him under the, uh, the, the tree outside the lagoon cabin. The tree that they sat under, the, all the leaves, all the branches just drooped. And they stayed that way until Baba finished, until he went inside. And then they all spruced up. And the, the silence, as, as Elitris talked about, not a bird, not a cricket, not a, not a sound. They were all just waiting for Baba to stop suffering and, you know, resume life again. Not a sound, and for all nature to just stand still, you, you, you have to say, really, it's incredible. And but this particular tree, they just drooped all, you know, as if it was just crying and weeping. Bob is suffering. Yeah. And after he went inside, right back up and full of life. Yeah. And um, that was the time when Baba was, um, he said that oh, he let us share in his suffering. And uh, we, you know, met with him in groups. And we was in the barn with him. And it gave me a lot of inner contact. In 56, I only saw him when at the uh, luncheon and also at, at, uh, at the hotel when we went for interviews. We have the first, oh, when we went upstairs after we came from the airport, went up to Baba's uh, uh, suite and um, they said Baba was going to embrace those who came, you know, from the airport with, to, him, to the hotel. So we were waiting in the interview, and when it was my turn, as I walked through the door to greet Baba, Erish was on the side, away from Baba. Baba was in the center of the, of the room. And uh, before Erish, I, I could hear Erish's voice, I heard Baba say, how much do you love Baba? And this voice from in his, and my mouth flew open, and I heard this voice, oh, so much. And I ran into Baba's arm, and I squeezed him so hard, Baba said, mm -hmm. he turned to energy, he said, mm -hmm. <laughs> I squeezed him so hard, then I realized, <laughs> I want to hurt Baba, but I squeeze him so hard, and he's so soft. His body is so soft. He smells so, oh, he's like a perpetual rose, you know. <laughs> Beautiful. And then I started, I, then the head comes to mind. You told Bobby you love him, how dare you? You didn't have no right to tell Bobby you love him. I was staggered out the room there, left my pocketbook. <laughs> but then I realized after I didn't answer, my mouth flew open, and I heard the word say, oh, so much. Uh, and Baba was so pleased. <laughs> and he had the way of taking you by uh, with, it, with his hands, you know? And oh, this did, did just barely touch, but oh, that touch was so soft, so gentle, uh, so gentle. And once he kissed me on my forehead, 
and on the cheek. Well, anything else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they were too young. Mm -hmm. it, they had to be. You had to be seven. And uh, have any of them stuck around with any Bob activities? No. Mm -mm. I wouldn't say no interest, but uh, they they don't. Um, two of them moved to Texas, and uh, the other one doesn't. Uh, she can tell you Bob is, did, is doing this and Bob is doing that. I, I don't question it. <laughs> yes. Yes, Liddell? Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and the one he sent for me, yeah, uh, uh, our family, he said, mm -hmm. those who are mine never die. My barrel lives in me eternally. That's, that, that was the cable he sent our family, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Bernice, mm -hmm. is the care of the foster children for you, is that, do you feel that that is Bob's work for you? Oh, yeah, definitely Bob's work for me. Yes, because I, ne I, had, I never had any intentions of going into foster care. I never had any intention, none, none, none. <laughs> I was, as I said, I was busy uh, uh, arranging my life for when I had no children to bother with. And the way I was eased into it, and I told you about this child, the first one that came to me, and then there were others, emergencies, you know. And the last children we got, uh, one, there were uh, siblings. And um, the, the, the youngest one was, um, yeah, suffered from multiple sclerosis. And I had to take care of that child in that wheelchair. And I mean, she couldn't hardly stand that. Ooh, <laughs> yes, indeed. That's Barbara's work, honey. Whatever, whatever the reason, maybe, uh, no, I don't want to even speculate. I don't want to speculate. Because when, the, when, the, when it was time for me to finish with them, I was finished. And the, the sister still sees us. You know, she would like to come and stay with us, but I, I'll see later on. Mm hmm <laughs> Thirty-six years. <laughs> That's nice to know. That's nice to know. <laughs> How do you feel about that? What? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, Barbara showed me that it was not an obstacle. The mere fact that, you know, where, whenever it was my turn to be with Baba, he made it possible, you know? For me, it was never an obstacle. I thought it was in 56, <laughs> you see? But Baba showed me that it wasn't the children and the husband. It was not my turn. It was not my time to be with him, see? He had a, more preparing to do for him. You know, for my, my time was to be with him in, from 1958. Yeah. So pretty much the relationship with Bob has been pretty personal to you and Bob. Yeah. Would you say that? Yeah. And uh, when uh, I need help, needed help, my husband was always there. He was always there. He never, you know, it came, came to, like the friends had gone for the loan. That was a pretty big loan. Yeah. <laughs> And he never said, well, no, you know, I, want, I don't think I can do that. Or, no, right away he went to the bank. <laughs> and two days he had the loan, the money, the check was there. Monday, hmm? Pardon? <laughs> he served his purpose, but I had, <laughs> wait. I will not 
not be a party to that. <laughs> <laughs> but Mama made me pay it back. <laughs> I had to go to work and pay that money back. So <laughs> yes. um, when we went to um, the last Darshan, oh yes, I must tell you this. Uh, in 1969, uh, the three children, the, these are the older children, uh, oldest children, and my husband and I went. And um, when we went in to, 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 to see the, the ladies, you know, the women, the girls, the two children and myself went in to see Mayor and Monty and, you know, the other women, Wanda Lee. So we were standing in this room talking to Mayor and everything, and she was asking us all about ourselves and whatnot. And Monty left, but I didn't think anything of it. And she went out, and then all of a sudden, we said, I'm standing next to Mayor. Yeah. And this vo this something this voice is uh, and now we'll have uh, a song from Bernice. <laughs> Mira started laughing. She started laughing. Then she looked at me, <laughs> pointing in the room, pointing in the room. She said, "Monty, <laughs> Monty is a ventriloquist." You know that, yeah. Mommy is a ventriloquist. And she went in the room and threw her voice out of me. And, uh, and I didn't know what happened. But I understood. <laughs> she, she wanted me to do something, you know, because everybody, she asked to participate, you know, in the, in the last Darshan program, something for Baba, you know, if a song or skit or whatever, you know, you remember. And, um, I had been terrified of audiences, and I never thought I had a voice. And I d still don't have a voice. <laughs> so, but I started thinking, all right, coming. <laughs> I started, <laughs> started thinking, well, Baba must want me to do something. And the song started going around in my head that I had learned when I was in, in, in Sunday school. And I always liked it. And every time, chance I would get, I would sing this song. It's called The Comfort Has Come. And I started putting words to the music of this song. And, and Lenny Willoughby and my sister and all, we would sit around and I wanted them to help me sing the song when, you know, and as I would get the verse, we would sing it and hum it and try to, you know, until we, was, it was beginning to take shape. So now up until the, to the, to the day before we were supposed to perform, I didn't have the last verse. And on the bus going to Karupasar, Baba gave me the last verse. So I'm going to recite it for you. I sing it. Sing it. Please. I, you know, I'm really am drawing. All right, well, help me. All right. It, uh, the chorus goes, the avatar has come, the avatar has come. Compassion, love from heaven, that ancient promise given. Go spread the tidings round, wherever man is found, the avatar is come. Now that's the chorus. In 1894, a baby boy was born, born with a mission, he, and grew a handsome lad, excelling in his class. Our hearts one day to free. The avatar is come, oh the avatar is come. Compassion, love from heaven, that ancient promise given. Go spread the tidings round. Wherever man is found, the avatar is 
come One day one of the five Beckoned me one to her side The time had come, you see She kissed away the veil And instantly he knew his age The ancient one is he Oh, the avatar has come The avatar has come Passion, love from heaven, that ancient promise given. Go spread the tidings round, wherever man is found. The avatar is come. Nine months in bliss consumed, his consciousness of gross removed. Our darling, mere one stayed. His dear mother thought him ill. Doctors plied him many pills. He roamed the infinite. Oh, the avatar has come. Yes, the avatar has come. Compassion, love from heaven, that ancient promise given. Go spread the tidings round, wherever man is found. The avatar is come. The perfect master's five brought him from his realm on high. And when their work was through, they gave him to the world, handed him their key, Pavada God is he. Oh, the avatar has come, the avatar has come. Has love from heaven, that ancient promise given. Go spread the tidings round, wherever man is found. The avatar is come. Jay Barber. <laughs>